Hi, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're now streaming live um, over the LF Conference Network. And so if I can grab your attention, that'd be fantastic. So I'm James McLeod, um, Finos Director of Community. Thank you so much everybody for being here today. I know that we've had a, a fantastic week of conferencing and we're at the last day. And so it's really good to see such a great turnout here in the room. Um, today, I'm going to be taking you through uh, the story of Finos, um, but we're going to do it in the style of Clint Eastwood. We're going to discover the good, the bad and the ugly um, of what's happening in the state of financial services. And so I'm going to start at the beginning of my journey uh, within financial services. And so I actually work for the Linux Foundation, being the director of community um, for Finos. But actually, before I joined Finos, I was part of um, a retail bank in the UK that was exploring digital transformation um, and how to uh, get things moving really quickly. And as part of that digital transformation, open source was definitely on the cards. But there, at that time, it was um, very difficult to persuade engineers anywhere within financial services that open source was actually something that we should engage with. So if you rewind just five years ago, open source was perceived as something that was for bedroom kind of coders and people who were putting things out, you know, into the wilderness um, of IT. It wasn't seen as something that was legitimate. You know, it wasn't seen as something that banks should engage with because basically you couldn't see the whites of people's eyes. You know, we'd like to have contracts. We like to have people around desks. So five years ago, the battle to get banks into open source was actually a really difficult one, but it's one that we persisted with and it's one that actually brought me into Finos. Um, and if, if it wasn't for the persistence of engineers on the ground, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah, I can ask the people. Yeah, I've had a nod, so we can indeed. Um, but if you fast forward, so just five years, if you fast forward from where I was uh, in a retail bank in London, persuading people to get onto GitHub and start looking at coding repos, to where we are today, things have wildly accelerated. You've got um, financial services companies that are actually looking at open source as a place to place all of their different standards, all of their codes, and to be custodians of those because they're observable. People can actually engage with them. And as you can see on this slide, open source isn't being uh, communicated to the financial services industry as a risk. You know, it's kind of being described to the financial services industry as the direction of travel and, and the place where banks should actually head to. And this brings me to where I am now uh, and where Finos is now within the Linux Foundation. As you can see from this slide, there are lots of logos here. But if you look um, really close, you'll notice that a lot of the logos are actually from banks. You know, at one point, you know, you would find that tech vendors and consultancies would actually, you know, outstrip the amount of banks that would be on here. But you'll notice that, you know, we have uh, Bank of Montreal, Citi, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, UBS, RBC and Wellington all on our platinum board, all helping us uh, take directions within the foundation and provide steering to the rest of the industry. And that is played out all the way through our, our gold membership and through our silver membership as well. We have banks who are working with technology companies and vendors, and we also have consultancies who, who are working in the open with banks in order to accelerate the industry. We also have associate members as well. So we invite uh, foundations and regulators and other uh, membership organizations like ourselves to join the foundation and work with us in order to really steer the industry in the direction in which it's heading. And so we actually uh, describe ourselves as a very diverse membership um, foundation of lots of different people with lots of different uh, points of view from banks all the way through to regu regulators as well. Now, financial services is actually being accelerated um, through this as well. Um, so the financial industry is at, a, at the beginning of its decade-long transformation by the world's best developers. 
if you are actually part of you know, the engineering industry, you'll know that there aren't enough engineers in the world in order to get to where we need to be. And if you've got multiple financial services institutions um, all solving the same problems, you're not going to be able to accelerate the pace of change. We need to start bringing all of those engineers together so we can start removing all of the duplication of that effort. You know, start collaborating and thinking as one group of collaborators, you know, within an open environment. And this is where we are now. This is what the foundation actually brings to the table. Now, what this actually means is that if you look at the way that banks have operated, well, they, they are operating like this now, but there's also innovation in this space. We are actually transforming from banks that have been deeply siloed, uh, that have been surrounded, you know, by mainframes and very difficult uh, routes to life, you know, onto those mainframes, to banks that are actually creating services and microservices that, you know, can be developed um, and worked upon by squads of engineers and feature teams. Um, they're committed into repositories as individual, you know, pieces of functionality using languages like JavaScript and Go and, you know, things that are very lean. All the way through to using and reusing and collaborating back into open source, you know, through all of the various different libraries that are being used out there. The interesting thing is, is that this isn't actually a waterfall diagram because the mainframe is still needing to be leveraged by banks. And banks still need to, you know, um, accelerate, you know, their development on the mainframe. I remember being an engineering lead in a bank thinking there's no way that I would ever want to develop in COBOL. You know, the, the COBOL environment for development was still, up until quite recently, green screens. But now open source is actually helping the mainframe to, to transform. Uh, there are providers of Kubernetes services on the mainframe that are allowing um, applications to be written anywhere, you know, using open source technologies. And so as you go through this cycle of mainframe and into services and using open source, that's being provided through the entire route to life um, of the banking industry. Not only that, but um, it's not just about code. It's not just about units of code and how you actually collaborate and contribute those units. There's also lots of different standards that are being driven through the banking industry. Um, that uh, lots of different uh, owners of those standards, such as the EDM Council and CDNC, can come together in order to increase the reliability of those standards, um, increase how they are being observed and how they're being contributed into. You've got open connectivity, such as over in you know the UK and the EU, you have like open banking. Um, and many different ways of engaging on decentralized data, giving data back to the owners of, of that data, which then allows uh, banks to tap into a global network of thinking um, and increase access to engineering, but also reduce cost, which is a massive digital transformation initiative, removing the cost or bringing the cost down on everything we do, whilst also accelerating and also creating efficiency that is the actual mantra of open source, and that is what we're pushing within Finos, um, and that is what, it, what Finos is actually being leveraged. Now, I'm actually painting a really great picture of where we are today, but just six years ago, when we were starting out, you'll notice um, that we were a room full of um, engineers coming from a very typical uh, banking background. You'll notice that you know, the, the community wasn't as diverse as it is, is today. You know, we recognize that um, we need to invite, you know, more engineers from different backgrounds and, you know, different points of view. And we have changed that. We have actually brought um, a whole range of different people, you know, from the stereotypical type of banking industry into one that's inviting creativity, different points of view, different types of development languages. And we listen to, you know, all of the points of view of those people and really bring them into, into Finos through the culture of open source and open source engineering. So whilst we're accelerating um, innovation uh, within 
So what we're actually setting out to do is accelerating innov innovation in the horizontal of banking by bringing all of the different types of players together that serve the financial services industry. So we're not just a foundation that is inviting big, big banks to the table to be able to do that. We do have the financial institutions, you know, who are the big players globally within the foundation. But we also want, you know, the agile and lean fintech vendors, you know, to come to the table as well to help accelerate with, you know, the very specific and their very, you know, subject matter expertise and, you know, specific functionality within the financial services industry with big tech as well. You know, so the cloud service providers coming to the table and actually helping us with the standards that are needed in order to keep data safe all the way through to the, the buy side banks and the sell side banks and the regulators as well. Now, by bringing all of these uh, parties together, surrounded by standardization, open governance, and also mutualization, um, which is actually a very important topic um, within all of the banking industry. How can we bring all of that thinking together how can we bring the thinking that is being replicated across you know, all of the multiple banks and bring it into the foundation? All of these different you know, types and styles of you know, standardization, um, interoperability between banks, you know, between uh, desktop you know, provision of service, all the way through to you know, mainframe and all the way through all of the very various different tiers we can accelerate engineering and also accelerate the way that banks interoperate between each other, both on the desktop and also at the API layer between banks themselves. And by doing that, one of the key um, methods within Finos that we use to bring all of these different people together, you know, that service the financial services industry is through the Open Source in Finance Forum which is the conference that Finos runs twice a year, um, which has actually got a, a massive growing popularity, um, both in New York and also in London. So recently in London, uh, at the beginning of this summer, we ran our open sourcing finance forum and we saw uh, the greatest number of people and participants come into that forum as we have seen since the start of the Open Sourcing Finance Forum. And that was post pandemic, pandemic as well. And I'm pleased to actually tell everybody here that we're, um, we've got our next Open Sourcing Finance Forum that's happening in New York this year on the 8th of December. And we're inviting people from within the Finos membership um, who get tickets allocated to them as part of their membership and also people outside of the Finos membership who can actually, you know, register for tickets and buy them online through the Linux, Linux Foundation to come and join us um, in New York on the 8th of December. Now, as everybody is sharing QR codes, um, I actually encourage everybody to get their phones out and start taking photos of the QR code on the bottom right hand side. And that will take you to um, the registration page um, for the Open Sourcing Finance Forum. And if you want to, um, we are still accepting, I believe, uh, calls for papers. Um, or if you have missed the deadline, you know, there are ways that you can reach out to, to myself over LinkedIn and the rest of the team in order to submit um, a financial services open source, you know, um, story or talk. It's a fantastic forum of people coming from across the financial services industry all the way through our membership and also through lots of different technology players as well. And so it's not just banks, it's engineers from banking all, all, all of the way through to cloud service providers and everybody who services, you know, the financial services industry. And it's a really great um, place to meet, you know, the engineers on the ground and have those engineering to engineering conversations too. Now, Finos um, has been through an evolution. Um, we didn't start yesterday. We've actually been uh, part of the open source community now for a great number of years. We were started, so our origin started in Wall Street um, around a communication platform for financial services called Symphony. 
um, which, you know, if you're going to compare it to any other communication platform that you know, I would say it's the slack of um, financial services where you can uh, talk between banks, but talk between banks knowing that you are part of a regulated industry and so it brings safety to that type of communication. Finos was actually the Symphony Software Foundation then. Um, we actually helped, you know, extend the functionality of the platform of Symphony uh, for Wall Street banks. But then there was like a great idea, you know, open source was opening up. Uh, we could see OSPOs kind of being created on the horizon. And so the Finos members, Platinum members, the governors of Finos decided to take the decision to actually create a horizontal foundation across financial services and not just focus on one platform. And that was the, the, the birth of Finos. That's how, you know, our origin started. Now, when we come, back, come together as, uh, you know, a board or, you know, we reflect on our history, seeing where we are now, you know, servicing the entire financial services industry across, you know, mostly uh, Wall Street and the City of London, but with um, LF Europe on the horizon pushing into Europe, it's amazing at how Finos as a foundation within the Linux Foundation and the conversations around open source are just accelerating. But it's always good to reflect on where you needed to be in order to be, in order to really demonstrate where you are now. So this brings me to the subject of the talk. So the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's take a look at the good. You know, let's take a look at where we are now within uh, open source in finance. So as you can see, we annually do the, the state of open source in finance um, survey, which I'll be posting a link for everybody here to take. Um, and I'm really pleased to say, when we actually go out to the wider open source um, participants in industry, innovation, you know, so moving faster, getting things done, you know, in a very kind of creative technology way is a key motivator uh, for partic participation in open source in finance. That's also showing that financial services isn't about, you know, boring monoliths anymore. You know, people want to actually get out there and demonstrate great solutions through innovation and pass innovation through to their engineering teams. 72% of financial services in institutions are looking for open source solutions. I remember there being a massive firewall in between me and open source and breaking through that was going out, you know, through the back door and going down to the local meetup at the end of the day. Now people are kind of, you know, looking at open source solutions as a, as a way of solving problems, you know, and the infrastructure teams that once blocked those solutions coming in are working with engineering teams to bring them in and actually use them. And that is absolutely amazing to see the growth. So 69% of respond, um, respondents have, you know, communicated that open source solutions improve the work productivity of their teams. You know, so the duplication of effort and the increased efficiency of teams is actually increasing and it's being recognized by Scrum Masters product owners and the people who are actually measuring this in banks. It's so good to have that marker coming back to open source as the solution that is providing that, in, that efficiency to where there was inefficiency once before. 72% of respondents said they're committed to looking for open source, you know, solutions and keep on looking for them. And so there are people out there, you know, looking in Finos, looking at what we're doing, consuming those, et cetera, and actually putting them to good use and also beyond Finos too. This is also a great marker. So this year, um, when uh, to do group gave their OSPO of the year, they gave it to a bank and that bank is actually a Finos member. So Goldman Sachs won OSPO of the year um, from the to-do group, which was actually amazing considering all of the tech vendors, you know, and all of the other technology players who don't have the regulatory boundaries that banks have to, you know, kind of understand and, you know, drive through in order to get into open source. Now, the very last um, uh, panel is actually where people are uh, moving to banks from technology companies and, and vendors to be part of the open source movement. 
people are deciding to go from that, you know, what was perceived as an innovative industry into one that used to be perceived as one that was quite slow. We're now finding that there is a migration from, you know, the faster tech vendors into banks because the movement is so strong. And the reason why they're doing this is so that they can actually collaborate um, on all of the various different solutions that we have in Finos, plus all of the uh, solutions that are coming into Finos. So we have a great landscape of different types of projects, all the way from data visualization on the front end um, of browsers using JavaScript, TypeScript, WebAssembly. You know, who would have think, thought that a bank, you know, would be pioneering and pushing forward WebAssembly? We have projects that can help map out um, the internal infrastructure and the, uh, and the solutions architecture of your bank, all of your licensing uh, dependencies, etc. We can get a real good taxonomy of what's happening in banks. Now, both of those projects, Perspective and Waltz, one was contributed into Finos by JP Morgan and Waltz was contributed by Deutsche Bank. And if you go through this, um, this cycle, data modeling through Legend was um, contributed by Goldman Sachs. More fur, um, which is a way of describing regulation as code, was contributed by um, JP Morgan. Then you have interoperability standards like FDC3 and also um, compliant financial infrastructure, where we have a maintainer of the project in the room here giving me um, solid advice and go get them, James. <laughs> And you can um, find all of these um, projects on the Finos landscape um, by going to landscape.finos.org where you can get an overview of all of these projects and it gives you kind of like a link back to the GitHub repository where they're all held and also a description of, you know, what the purpose of those projects are and how you can actually leverage them. So it's an absolute positive sum game. You know, we're bringing people together from across the entire horizontal industry of financial services, from financial institutions. Those fintech vendors are starting to really kind of come forward. We had Clearbank, who are a, bank, a, a payments provider within the UK, um, give a fireside chat with myself at the last open SSF, um, open source in finance forum um, just this year. This, uh, this summer, those big tech vendors are starting to join. So we have Google who are part of um, uh, the foundation and Intel and, you know, we have Red Hat and other vendors who bring, you know, all of the big tech and uh, big tech solutions to the, to the party. We have BuySide and we also have the regulators who are starting to step forward through our regulation innovation special interest group, you know, turning regulation and policy into code. Um, and also getting horizon um, compliance landscape projects in, etc. Now, this is um, being the director of community for Finos. This is actually really exciting because you know we like to uh, you know measure the success of the foundation. And as you can see, when we look at who are contributing into the foundation, despite you know all of the various different uh, regulations and um, CCLAs that need to be signed by banks. The top contributors into Finos are actually from banks. Um, we have all of these technology vendors and consultancies, you know, who don't have as many hoops to jump through um, as part of the foundation. But still, Goldman Sachs, Deutsche Bank, Morgan Stanley are the top contributors. They're the people who are putting code into GitHub through the foundation, into their projects and then into the open source landscape. We are finding year on year that our contribution is actually growing. So if you look at the metrics, so metrics.finos.org, where all of our various metrics um, are actually held, where we measure the success of the foundation, you'll find year on year our contributor strength is growing by 30%. And so we've got a nice steady up curve there. We've got 1,500 plus contributors over time. And one project contributed into Finos each month from a financial services vendor. That is absolutely amazing that, you know, banks are actually finding ways of taking sometimes projects that are on the inside of banks and recognizing that these have horizontal value to everybody in order to really kind of push that efficiency button, you know, and duplication of effort. Those projects are coming out of those banks and they're appearing in Finos. And actually, you know, it's the reputation of Finos, that Finos is becoming a name that people are recognizing. 
and so it just makes sense for all of these contributions to come into the to come into the foundation and the Linux foundation. Now that those last um, measures were kind of upstream measures, people contributing into repositories, you know, people joining the foundation. These next ones are adoption. These are how banks are actually adopting projects from Finos through open source and bring them down, you know, through registers and, you know, different methodologies of getting code out of, you know, open source and being leveraged. And so you can see the perspective, which is the JavaScript project that I was describing before, has had 2,500 NPM downloads in three years. Well, 2,500, an increase of 2,500% of downloads through NPM. So you're coming straight down through the NPM registry as JavaScript and into browsers and being leveraged, you know, across the open source industry, because all of these projects are open to anyone to use, but mostly into banks. And FDC3, which is an interoperability desktop standard that we use, uh, that we uh, maintain, has had, a, had a, an increase of over 800, 485% using uh, NPM downloads as well. So we are pushing in both directions. We're attracting more people into the foundation and our projects are also being leveraged by more teams and more banks um, across the Finos landscape. Now, open source, you know, everywhere is about the people that it attracts, you know, to lead and also be on the ground doing the work. Finos is actually attracting some really great people from across the industry to help with the governance and steering. So you'll notice that we've got some great people from within financial services, such as Kim Prado um, from BMO, who is actually the vice chair or actually the chair of Finos now. So she has been an absolute advocate and supporter of the foundation and helps kick off our conferences and give steer to the entire foundation as a massive advocate of open source throughout the industry. We also have open source program office leads uh, like Noreen from uh, Capital One, um, who is on the board, and also uh, Madeline, um, who has joined from Wellington, one of our newest um, platinum uh, board members um, joining the board. Plus, we've also now got our technical steering committee, which is actually new to Finos now. We want to make sure that um, Finos isn't seen as like a, a centralized decision maker on what happens, you know, as uh, Finos directors and leads within the foundation. We want to delegate that across our membership. And we're, you know, really proud to have Colin Eberhardt as uh, the, the chair of the technical steering committee who helps guide our path on the projects and, you know, technical decisions that we make, you know, with uh, all of our members and all of our contributors. Now, now that we are part of the Linux Foundation, we are now related to a lot of other great foundations as well. And so we've got a lot of uh, financial services engagement across, you know, the Linux Foundation, such as the Hyperledger Foundation and CNCF. We've also got a massive drive to make sure that our repositories and projects are being looked after, you know, in the right way, as you would expect through the um, open SSF. You know, we're educating our maintainers and providing them with training and courses, you know, to make sure that they are managing their projects, you know, in the agile and DevOps and automation way as open SSF are actually, you know, instructing the industry, which is fantastic. You know, we are part of the Linux Foundation. And so we are being supported and also support, you know, other foundations as well. You will also notice if you look on the OpenSSF website that we have commonalities too. So Morgan Stanley, Citi and JP Morgan are all sitting on the board of OpenSSF and they all sit on the board of Finos as well. And so financial services industries are leveraging open source through Finos and also giving uh, the also keeping the open source industry safe, you know, through being part of OpenSSF as well. And so that is actually a great benchmark when the banks are actually keeping, you know, people safe through security mechanisms, etc. Now, Finos as um, a foundation, um, we attract a lot of contributions from our members and the people who know us 
but we're also being recognized by other um, entities within financial services, you know, people who haven't necessarily been part of the FINOS membership. And we have uh, recently announced um, that the CDM um, has been uh, chosen um, by ISDA, um, uh, ICMA, and ISLA <laughs> as the custodians of the CDM. Um, and so we are having the CDM, so the common domain model, being contributed into FINOS. Um, it's being socialized at the moment and going through our technical steering committee. But this is a massive thing for us. This is, um, we had to actually pitch the foundation against multiple other people who uh, put themselves forward to be custodians of the CDM. And because of our reputation and because of our board members and the support that we have from industry, we were chosen as the place where the CDM should actually reside. And so that was a massive announce announcement for us. And it's something that we're extremely proud you know, to, to let people know. Now, uh, there are some bad things as well. I mean, you know, there's loads of good news that, you know, I'm kind of conveying here, but there are also other things that, you know, we, we also need to recognize as well. Clearly, open source isn't done. The finan financial services industry isn't done with transformation. Um, but, you know, there are policies that need to be created and encouraged in order to, um, in order for banks to be able to contribute into upstream. Um, we're still finding that there are heavy restrictions on some banks that stop engineers, you know, and other people who want to engage in open source from being able to do that. You know, we haven't opened up everywhere yet. And also, only 35% of uh, the firms who have responded to our open source surveys are aware of an OSPO within their organisation. You know, there are lots of people out there who aren't aware that an open source pr programme office actually exists. Plus also, a lot of banks, the majority of banks, don't have access to simple things like Google Docs. You know, it's, it's a massive problem. You know, it's something that everybody else has, you know, solved. But in a bank, you open Google Docs, you know, your firewall's not going to let you through. Now, as I said earlier, we like to collect information from, you know, everybody who's engaging in open source, especially in finance. Um, so if you would like to uh, participate in the state of open source in financial services survey for us so we can get collect more data that you know I've just presented to you it'd be amazing if you could um, scan the QR code there and just go through you know the, the the questions that are asked you might think that it's not relevant to you um, but just please um, take a look and be guided by the questions um, because the more information that we have in order to guide people through the more you know, knowledge we have at our disposal about you know, how we can actually you know, accelerate into open source and the types of problems that we also need to solve. But dis despite all the hype, despite the fact that we have great momentum and despite the fact that a lot more you know, banks and financial services companies are joining, fintechs are still a little late to the party. You know, so we need, we, understand that fintechs like to describe financial services engineering in a different way. You know, the, the banks are going through their digital transformation initiatives and they just describe digital transformation. The fintechs are kind of more lean and they're kind of doing things faster and they don't, they perceive, they don't want to perceive being part of a foundation as something that will slow them down because it's tighter banking. And so we are working in order for those fintechs to get involved and start contributing into open core projects, you know, and do more contribution. We're bringing those fintechs to the table to actually um, demonstrate and have conversations with them that we are working fast, we are lean, we do understand, you know, we are producing standards and interoperability kind of solutions that allow fintech companies to be able to swap information and be able to uh, engineer with some of the greatest, you know, kind of engineers in the industry who actually happen to work, you know, in some of the bigger banks. And we are doing that through our open source conferences, our meetups, bringing people to the table, showing people our coding repos. 
the, the fintechs are late to the party, but they are joining the party. As you can see, there, there is OpenBB, there's Move, there's Open Bank Project, there's Mifos, who are starting to kind of really engage in open source. In fact, um, Gabrielle Columbru, uh, the executive director of Finos, um, sits on the advisory board for OpenBB. And so all of these different parties, although they are a little bit late, they're not entirely late. If we can convince the fintechs to join, this is the map of um, fintech in Singapore uh, across 2022. There are some great solutions out there to be, you know, to be communicating with and to have engaged in open source. Fintech is, you know, where engineers are, and that's where the foundation, you know, needs to be. And so, if we can attract fintechs into Finos to work with the bigger banks, there'll be loads of engineering solutions to be shared, and there'll be some great minds and some great thinking to be leveraged as well. You know, which also adds to the positive sum game. So this is where we actually get into the ugly of everything um, because there is still vendor lock-in, you know, so there is a great, you know, open source um, world to be leveraged, but still, you know, there is still data lock-in, you know, there is still identity lock-in. There's end user application and regulated nature lock-in, you know, so those worlds still exist. You know, there's um, open source opens that up you know, but we need to open it up further and start, you know, removing all of that locking and really start leveraging, you know, open source for what it is to be in control of your engineering solutions rather than being tied into things that are very difficult to escape. People are saying that they're doing open source, but they're not really doing open source. And so what we call open washing still exists. You know, there are people who you know, saying that they are involved in open source activities. But when you look under the surface, they're not really. So we need to kind of educate, you know, on what open source actually is, you know, to people and get them contributing as open source, you know, contributors and get them leveraging open source in the way they should be le leveraged. We also need to um, make sure that, you know, we are expanding the industry in the right way, providing engineering solutions to problems rather than just removing regulation. You know, we can actually provide different um, engineering solutions to things within open source that allow the industry to move forward. So deregulation um, versus re-regulation, etc. You know, we need to really kind of like get into that. And we also need to make sure that removing silos, you know, that banks operate in, doesn't lead to some form of spaghetti western, you know, kind of out in the open source land. You know, we need to be able to uh, leverage open source solutions in the way that they should be leveraged and not create a wilderness that's very difficult to navigate. So where do we go from here? So firstly, we need to invite global constituents to the table. We need everybody to start participating in open source across the financial services industry. We need fintech engagement, you know, to be able to get into those real niche minds of, you know, solutions that can bring great benefits into financial services industry. And then we also need to start collaborating because that's where all of those engineering velocity efficiencies, cost saving reductions, etc., really live. And so why should you care? So from a founder point of view, open source kind of like brings all of those digital transformation um, solutions to you. From a developer point of view, you get to work with some of the greatest minds kind of like in the open source and also banking industries. So there's some great people out there. So if you're a CTO or an executive director of a bank, look at the digital transformation positives of open source. If you are a developer, get to know everybody who, who works there and you know really join the discussion around engineering solutions and really fire up your career through open source. And then together, we can actually turn this kind of collaboration through open source into a banking landscape um, where we have lots of different uh, tiers of banking working together and we can create an open platform of financial services through all of the various different tiers of banking. And at Finos, 
we want to actually help you know you and your teams and your banks do this by growing community you know by providing infrastructure by having a no pay to play and being your open source foundation for the financial services industry and if you can't engage in that directly come to finos and have an opinion you know just state what it is that you're either enjoying or the things that you actually find difficult and actually get involved you know be part of an open source industry and with that i'd like to say thank you for being here today please engage with us through open sourcing finance forum take our survey you know and actually you know contribute to open source through data and through you know the state of open source and join the foundation as a contributor you know so you can find us on our website um, and you can start contributing from this afternoon if you like um, all of these qr codes will take you to the various different places that you need to be thank you very much for being here i'm james mcleod and um, you've been wonderful thank you Right, I don't know if we've got time for any questions. I think we're at the end now. Quick question. You mentioned WebAssembly. Uh, yes. Which projects was that construction? That's Perspective by JP Morgan. Um, so that is uh, the visual front end. So it's like uh, real-time data, um, visual representation. Um, it's in the Finos organization on GitHub. Just look for Perspective um, and you'll see it in there. Yeah, they're a great team. They're very responsive to questions through uh, GitHub issues. James, you're the director of community. Yep. And banks and financial services have clearly a wholly undeserved reputation for being selfish and greedy. And um, you know, a couple of times you've talked about um, things like um, going open source as a way for them to avoid their resource constraints in, in finding developers and um, not reinventing the wheel and it seems like that's a sort of return on investment uh, approach to advocacy for contributing I mean is that the approach you have to take to get these people to listen to you Ooh, that's um so as a director of community I would actually say that I work mostly within engineering teams you know so I work with you know the engineers on the ground um, who they have two personas. They have their, I'm a banking engineer kind of persona. I go and work in a bank every day. And then after work, I go to a JavaScript meetup and I contribute to open source projects. And so I really listen to um, all of the benefits that they bring forward, you know, to me and, you know, to other engineers about, you know, it would be really great if, you know, we could get involved in this project over here through open source, because not only will it, um, take us up the ladder of you know the technology that we're using within the bank but i'll be able to expand my network and i'll be able to go to conferences you know and do different talks and then we kind of um, match that kind of bottoms up you know this is what your engineers really want to do this is what they're telling us and this is what they should be telling you um, to the ctos who are looking at excel spreadsheets you know of you know how can we actually you know remove duplication of effort and bring costs down and then we try and move it into, you know, kind of like the middle. But I have to admit, um, I've never had a cynical kind of, you know, how can we reduce costs through this? You know, people do like to know that. But a lot of the banks that I'm working do actually come in from the culture side now. There's like a great awareness that a lot of people are coming through university with these skills already, whether it's, you know, cloud first or whether it's open source first. And they know that they need to change. So I think a lot of the change is actually being pushed through the change of engineering culture. And if you don't adapt to that, then you're going to start running out of engineers as people start retiring, you know, and that's the honest truth. Um, and so that wave of change is, you know, through cost efficiencies of cloud as well. Um, so it's, it's a happy balance, but I, I would say that they are actually really aware of the cultural change that needs to happen. Um, but it, they're still big oil tankers and it takes a little bit of time for them to move, but, but it's there. It, it is there. Right, I don't know if we need to vacate this room for the next speaker. <laughs> Always right. Lunch break. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Have um, safe journeys home and um, enjoy the rest of the day.